So today here we are at the Jumonville Glen. This is a National Historic Site. This is where uh, I believe the French and Indian War started. So we're going to take a tour down through this. It was a half a mile loop and look at where Washington and the French first engaged in like uh, 1750, well 1754 is what it says. So as we walk through this trail there will be different stations. We'll try to take pictures of these. Again, it's nothing like being here in person, but if you can get an, an idea of what things look like. Here's the first placard. I think the significance of this is uh, Washington at Fort Necessity. We'll get a, get a picture of this. Washington was at Fort Necessity, and the Native Americans came. We were allies to the, to the English, because we were an English colony back then, and said, hey, the uh, the French are here. <clears throat> There's a small army of them. So Washington grabbed some guys and the Native Americans and came from Fort Necessity here to see what the Indians were doing. And then basically they, they ambushed them and killed one of the leaders. And I think that's what started the French and Indian War. So here we are at the next uh, marker. This talks about uh, Lieutenant Washington, Lieutenant Colonel George Washington. Uh, 40 in number, I didn't realize there were 40 people. But you can read through this. Again, I'm sure this is all online, but it's, I try to document some of these, you know, lesser known places. I didn't know this even existed until four or five years ago. And I started looking at my own history. So I'll get another placard along the way. I'm not sure if I can get a picture of it, but we can at least hold the camera on it for a while. The way the sun's coming through here. Done a nice job of documenting all this. So for me, the interesting thing is the perspective. You know, looking at the, as soon as we walked on through there, the placards and the trails are all cut nicely. And Washington and his troops would have come through. I'm not even sure if this was the right road, but you can see how deep the, the ruts are. So I'm sure this is something that's been preserved. But you know, back then there were no markers, there weren't any, there were no GPS. Really, the only maps they had were the maps that people had made themselves. So I, I can pretty much see this being. The same as what Washington's troops would have been whenever they came down here to see really what the French were up to. They, at that point, reading through the markers, they didn't know whether they were here on a you know, military mission or a, you know just a diplomacy mission to see if they could make peace with the British. But it was nice that we had the allies of the Native Americans. I think it's placard said uh, the Iroquois were helping the English. And again, here we are at the next station. I'll get a picture of this, hopefully it comes out. But if we sweep through, this is the trail that we came down through. So I'm sure the French troops not expecting anything. <clears throat> they'd camped here, had a fire. No idea that the, the British, Washington, and the Native Americans were here. You know, again, the Native Americans were just masters at stealth. We consider them to, uh, to today's commandos. And from what I read, once the attack started, the French started running in different directions. They ran down this way, but they were met by the, uh, the Native Americans. And if you've ever seen them in the traditional dress, I mean, they are scary as crap, just intimidation. So they turned around and ran back and, and surrendered to Washington. But not before a bunch of them got uh, shots. We'll go up on top of the hill and just see what, uh, you know, again, here's George Washington, a young lieutenant colonel, and he's taking advantage of the, the stealthy conditions and the situations. You know, a lot of the men that were in this were new. They had never fought before. So, you know, he had one of his first commands. So from this view, I mean, what a, it wouldn't take a genius military tacticianer to know this is where you wanted to attack from. So again, Washington's troops up on top, I'm sure he had the troops over on the right flank, troops over on the left flank. I'm not sure you'd need anyone on the other side. And, <clears throat> you know, if you had 20 guys, just five guys up on top here, six, seven guys up on top reloading as quick as they could, they could fire off, you know, two, three rounds a minute. Wouldn't take long before you would just, I mean, the French were just in 
they are disarray. They had no idea what was going on. And, you know, Washington had taken the high ground, which again is the militarily right thing to do. So you can see the, you know, the French would probably just want to run down there to try to, you know, retreat and get the, get things collected before they try to do a return. But by that time, you know, the Native Americans were down there, which sort of compounded, you know, just the scare factor of having those guys. But again, I really don't think this has changed very much since when Washington was here. Pretty quiet. Um, I'm sure it was quiet the night before, and I'm sure it was quiet the night after. But this really started the, precipitated the uh, French and Indian War. You know, here's another view. You can get the camera up enough. You see over the hill, over the rocks. But Washington's troops would have been up on this ridge. You know, and this is what an observer, of course they didn't have the observers back then, this is what an observer would have seen. So it would be pretty easy to put yourself back in that time period. You know, there campfire going on. You know, maybe there's some wine. They're drinking, telling, you know, stories of living on the frontier. Some people don't want to be here. Some people want to go back to France. People talking about the savage Indians and the savage conditions of living outside. I mean, they weren't used to that. In France, they were civilized back then. And Washington's troops slowly crept up here. I think it was 7 in the morning was when they actually attacked. But back then they were civil. I mean, they would kill people. I mean, that's not very civil, but it was war or, you know, trespassing on property. But, you know, once they surrendered, they didn't kill them. They actually allowed them to um, lay down their weapons and return them. Some of them let like, keep your weapons just you know, was an honorable thing back then, which I think we've lost all of that. So there you have it, there's Jumonville Glen. The French uh, person who died was uh, Jumon, I believe. And he was, uh, again, you can read up to see who he was, but he was a high up. They didn't like the fact that he was dead. I'm not sure if he was royalty or not, but there's Jumonville. So as we leave Jumonville Glen, we came in on the trail leave on the trail that we came in on. Wondering if this is the trail that Washington would have led the French prisoners up and the wounded. I believe the dead were probably buried where they lay. I say the Indians, Native Americans, did scalp the, the dead, scalp the wounded, and wanted the, the prisoners, but Washington wouldn't release them. Washington was an honorable man. A little more civility back then. It would be nice to come through and metal detect this whole area. But I imagine that's already been done. Preserve this for future generations. But as we make our way back to the head of the trail, this is just another one of the examples of Pennsylvania history, American history. You can do more research looking online, or you can actually get out and look at this yourself. Thank you for watching.